Hello friends, I hope you're having a good day. I've got good news for you. Jesus loves you, in spite of all the chaos that's going around. I thought I'd start today with a little bitty, uh, kind of a, what can I say, uh, uh, illustration, if I, if, you can, if I can say, a little experiment that's going on here. Uh, take this jar right here. Take this jar, and you know, if I fill this jar with, with 100 black ants, and I fill this jar with 100 red ants, and, and I put a little food in there, you know what they do? Well, they just, they just do the things that ants do. They, they would build and construct and go get the food and carry it back, I guess, to the queen or whatever, whatever ants do. That's what they would do. But if I were to take this jar and just start violently shaking this jar around, shaking it, shaking it, shaking it, and then, and then open up the lid and go, I bet you thought something was going to come out, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lid on here, so I wouldn't do that. But if, I, but if I poured this out on the ground, full of these ants, you know what they do? The fight would be on. You know why? Because they think each other is the enemy, the one that caused the shaking. When in fact, we know it's a lot different than that. Well, friends, that's exactly what's taking place in our world right now. Someone is violently shaking this world, violently shaking it, friends. And, and, and right now, the fight is on. Everybody is fighting against everybody else. And I think fear is the very root of this. Fear, the unknown, or, 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 uh, or maybe not understood, it causes fear. You know, we've got Democrats against Republicans, don't we? We've got, we've got, we've got blacks against whites. We've got... We've got Masks against anti-masters. We got uh, this COVID conspiracy against that COVID conspiracy. We got liberals against conservatives, and, and you see this all the way. We got Fox against CNN. So we got we got all these different <laughs> fights and wars going on and battles. And you know what? We blaming each other. We keep looking at each other and blaming each other. But it's really the one shaking the jar. Friends, if there was ever time that we needed a Savior, it's now. And I just hear from the Word of God today, God has got a precious message from us. That still small voice of God, amidst all the storm, He says this to you today, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And verse 13 says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, in a world that, that's being shaken, somebody's shaking the jar, Lord, and, and we need your help. We, we, need, we need the confidence, the assurance that you're right here with us and that you're going to help us. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Do not be afraid. You know, over 400 times in the Bible, you see this command here. It's one of the most common. Do not be afraid. Fear not, for I am with you. Friends, this is so important. The realization of God's presence. It's, it's knowing that He's there, that we're not alone. We need that so desperately especially right now with all this COVID. COVID has just put the world in chaos. It's turned the world upside down right now. And, and people are, are, are just constantly being shocked by what is going to happen next as we turn the news channel on. And this social media, saying this and saying that, it's just like we're over and over and over, we're being shocked. Uh, and, and it's causing us chaos, and it's causing confusion, and it's causing anxiety. You know, uh, a research study, it reminds me of a research study that was done not many years ago, uh, where this little lamb, they took a little lamb away from its mom and they put the lamb in a pen. And inside that pen, they had food and water for that little lamb, that baby lamb. And after a little while, being that pen, the little lamb walks over to, to get some water and some food. And when they did, the, the scientists had put a little shock collar on that lamb and as soon as that lamb was, was about to get something to drink, they shocked that little lamb. What happened when this happened, it just scared the little lamb. 
and it great, greatly upset it. And it say it say there it went over to the corner of the pen and just started shaking. You know, uh, continuously could not stop shaking. You could tell it was just greatly dis, you know distressed and stressed out that little lamb. And when it looked like that that little lamb wasn't going to get any better, uh, that it might even die, that they come in and they put the mother in with that little lamb in the pen. As soon as the mother was placed in the pen, of course the little lamb ran over to its mom and it quit shaking and started rubbing up against her. And one very long, that little lamb headed toward the water and the food again. And when it got to the water and the food again, they did it again. They shocked that little lamb. And immediately... The lamb went and turned and went back and pressed up against the mother again. But it didn't stay there very long. In just a little while, it headed right back, this time, to the water and food again. And as soon as it got there, they, the scientists did it again. They shocked the little lamb again. But this time, the little lamb just kind of shook it off and continued eating and drinking. Friends, it's just something about knowing that we are not alone that God is with us, that He's for us, that nothing, that nothing can touch our life unless it goes through Him first. We, we've got somebody that's on our side, that protects us, that loves us, that's got a plan for our life. Open up your Bible to Psalms 23. Psalms 23 is probably my favorite scripture in the whole Bible, and it is to a lot of other people too. It's, it's, it's a game changer for a lot of people's lives, especially when you get it here. Now, given what we've already talked about, about the little story of the Lamb, for example, picture the 23rd Psalms right here. And I want you to use your imagination here as we go through this and just let Jesus paint this picture in your mind. First off, it starts out, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now, I want you to notice this. He does what? He leads me. He leads me beside the still waters. Can you picture right now, in your mind, Jesus leading you through life? He's ahead of you. There's nothing that can touch your life unless it gets His permission, unless it goes through Him first. He restores my soul. There's something about that when you realize that Jesus, your Lord, is leading the way in your life. He knows the way home. There's something about that that, that restores you, that, that it just brings healing inside of you, where someone else might be full of fear, full of confusion, and very rattled, kind of like that little baby lamb was, just shaking. Someone that knows that their Lord is their shepherd, and He's leading them and guiding them, it's an inner peace about that. It goes on to say, He leads me. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will do what? I will fear. I will fear no evil for you are with me. You are with me. Are you picturing that now? Jesus, the good shepherd, is leading us. Leading us through life, friends. Not only is he leading us, but he's with us on either side. If we turn this way, He's there. If we turn this way, He's there. The incredible picture that the Bible is painting here of, of Jesus surrounding us, our Good Shepherd. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my, uh, of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Right back here. Follow me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, are you getting this beautiful picture that the scriptures are giving us about our shepherd? Our shepherd keeps us. He watches over us. He protects us. As we, he, he leads us. He's with us. He's behind us. He has completely got us surrounded, friends. There's nothing that can touch our life unless it goes through him first. He's got to give permission. And friends, if he allows something to come into your life, he's going to help you through it no matter what it is. So I think this is so important. Uh, just this cultivating and practicing an awareness of God's presence in our life. You know, 
I know this might be kind of difficult if it's something that you've never given much thought to, but it's something that's important to God. Or He wouldn't give us these kind of pictures in the Bible. He wants you to know that He's there with you, and that He loves you, and that He cares about you. In fact, one of the last chapters in the Bible, the last chapter in the Bible, in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus paints a beautiful picture for us. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Listen to these words right here. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Picture this imagery that, that God has given us here. This, he wants you to get this picture. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. What a beautiful picture. Right now, Jesus knocking at your heart's door. Can you, can you see that? Can you picture that in Scripture uh, as you think about it, as you dwell on it? As you meditate on it, you know, you might be thinking, well, how, how does this work here? What Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 18, go there or, or listen to me, here's a sure. Jesus says it's, how this works is it's, it's through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Jesus says. In John chapter 14, verse 18, Jesus promises that through the Holy Spirit, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So, I, can you almost picture that? As the Holy Spirit enters the doors of our heart, He brings with Him all the fullness of God. Now, now think about this, because this is deep. It really is. Real Christianity, this is so important, is not just memorizing a set of fundamental beliefs or doctrines or something like that. What it's really more about, friends, is opening up the heart to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Opening up the heart and letting Jesus in. That's what it's all about. Because he's, he's knocking at our heart's door. But friends, he's not going to open that door. He's knocking because he wants to be part of your life. He wants to help you. He wants to be the shepherd which protects the sheep and provides every need that the sheep would not want anything. But we've got to open the door. That's the picture that the Bible gives us here. We've just got to do that. And you're thinking, oh, Pastor, well, I, how does it work in my life? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because that's important. And, and do, you want, do you want Jesus to come into your life? Do, do you want to have an experience with Jesus like you've never had before? Start praying. I know that sounds simple, but just start praying. You know, a lot of us, you know, when we pray, we, we, we say we do pray. But a lot of us, when we pray, what we do is we come to Jesus with our want list. Oh, Jesus, I, will, will you get me this? And, and will you get me that? Give me, give me, give me. And, and oh, Lord, my back's hurting and my big toe's hurting. And, uh, and would you heal Aunt Susie? And, and we should do all these things. Don't get me wrong. We should do all these things. But when is a lifetime, friends, that you just, that you just got on your knees and you just cried out from your heart, Jesus, I don't want anything but you. I just, I just want to come to you in prayer. I want, to, I want you in my life. I want to be filled with your presence. Oh, how God wants that. Oh, how he wants to come in and just, and just dine with you and, 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 just, and just spend time with you. Oh, how he wants to just walk through life with you. He wants to get up in the morning with you and, and he wants to spend some special time. He wants to go to work with you. And while you're driving to work, you could talk to him. He wants that. That's what we're really created for, right there. You know, so you might be thinking right now, well, I used to kind of have that. I used to kind of have that, uh, but I'm just not where I used to be. It's kind of like my fire's gone out. I don't know what's going on. You know, I just, I used to have such a strong walk with the Lord. Friends, if that is you, all you've got to do is start praying. Start talking to him. Start reaching out to Jesus. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Ceasing. And it can be a simple prayer. You can just say, God, come into my life. Come into my life, God. I need you. you know, I don't want to live this life anymore without you. I, want, I, want, I don't want to just visit you. I want, I want to stay with you. I want you to just live in my heart. I want you to be on the throne of my heart is what I need more than anything. Go ahead and be honest. Uh, and, and sometimes it's, it, it's such healing and honesty, especially when you talk to Jesus about it say lord i'm scared for the future i don't know what i'm scared for the future a lot of people might not be the scared for the might not be scared for their own future but they might be scared for their children's future 
You know, they might be concerned for their grandchildren. It's okay to talk to Jesus about that. Talk to him about it. Just pray. Just ask him. In fact, Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, in verse 13, If you then, being evil, know how to get good gifts to your children, how much, do you know the next word? Do you know what the next word? How much more? Don't you love that, friends? You know, I love that. Whatever I need, he has so much more. You know, whatever I desire, he has much more. Whatever my heart longs for, he has much more. You know, however much I want Jesus in my life right now, he wants to be in my life much, much more. Now, in John chapter, uh, John chapter 16, in verse 7, yeah, let me show you something else that I think is really, really special that's going to help you understand this. In John chapter 16, in verse 7, Jesus says to his disciples, Nevertheless, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, did you hear that? This is so important, friends. Take note of this. Take note. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. I could have just imagined being there with the disciples. I'm sure that their jaw hit the floor when he, when he said that in shock. How could it be to our advantage, Lord? I mean, we, we need you in our life. We, 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 we don't want to live our life apart from you. Think about it. What's Jesus trying to say right here? What's he saying? Does Jesus mean that, it, that, that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, if I'm open, and this is the key part, if I'm open, if I open that door, if Revelation 3.20, if I open that door, if I'm willing to do that and receive him into my heart, that I can now have a more intimate experience, a, a closer walk, a, a, a more personal connection with Jesus Christ, than if Jesus Christ was right with you in the room, but sitting in the other corner. Is that what Jesus is saying right there? You know, let's, let's read this again. Nevertheless, Jesus is saying here, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, Jesus was walking with them and talking with them in the same room. You know, walking down the same room. They were eating together. But he's telling them, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. If I depart, I will send him to you. Did you hear that, friends? Friends, we have a Helper. Praise God, that's good news. That's incredibly good news. We're not alone anymore. God is with us. God is with us. Jesus has given us the most wonderful, complete, abundant gift there is. The gift of the presence of God in our lives. That's what he's saying right here. Now, friends, this has been God's plan from the very beginning. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27 said, It's the mystery of all mysteries. It's Christ in you. Christ in you. Not, not over there, not over there, but Christ in you, in our heart. That's putting the law in our heart. That's been God's plan from the very beginning. Christ in you, God's presence in you. You know, that's why Jesus said that. That's why it was to their advantage. That's why it's to our advantage right here. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, Jesus can live in each one of our hearts at the same time. You get that, right? In, in, a, in, in a very present, in a very real way. Friends, it's one thing for him to be in town. You know, in town over at your neighbor's church. It's one thing for him to even be in the room with you over there, you know, like Jesus was. But it's quite another thing, friends, for Jesus to be in your heart, dwelling in you, part of you, Praise God. You see, with humanity, cumbered with humanity, Jesus could only be at one place at one time. Because if he was with Peter in Jerusalem, 
He could not be with Thomas in doing missionary work in India. And, and if he was with me right now, right here, he couldn't be with you right where you're at right now seeking him. So, but, so this is incredibly good news, friends. This is the best news in the whole wide world. That's the reason it's called the gift of the Father. It's the promise of the Father that the Bible talks about in the New Testament. No one can be closer to Jesus than you. No one can be there. You can have all Jesus to yourself. Think about that, friends. You can have all of Jesus you want. All of him. All of him you want. Nobody can be closer to Jesus than you. Through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Jesus can be a very present help in time of need. Friends, He's right there with you in your time of sorrow. He's right there with you in your time of need. He's, he's right there with you in your time of sickness. He's right there with you when, when, when you're discouraged. He's right there with you when you're, when you're fearful. He's right there with you when you're, when you're lonely. He's right there for you when you're broken hearted. He's right there to pick you up. <clears throat> He's right there with you when you're, when, you're, when you're overtaken with sin. Jesus, your helper, a perfect, perfect helper, always there for you in your time of need. You see, friends, that's what Christianity is really all about. That's what the Christian life's all about. It's, it's not about gritting our teeth. And, and battling and struggling, trying to be good. That's not what it's all. You can't do it. It's about letting him in. Let him fight out the battle. It's his righteousness, friends. It's about opening up your heart to God. That's what it's about. It's about inviting him in. Opening that door. It's the door, I want you in. See, Jesus wants to come in. He's painted that picture. He's knocking at our heart's door. He, you don't have to fear you don't, you don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't have to be concerned about the future. You don't have to fight that sin anymore. You don't, you don't have to do any of that that you've been struggling with. Let Him in. Let Him in, and He will do it. The battle is the Lord. See, it's about allowing Jesus to live in you, not just to visit you once or twice a week or, or a month or whatever. No, it's about Jesus opening up your heart and let Him in. Friends, you can have all Jesus you want. Don't you want him? Don't you want Jesus? Oh, how he wants to be part of your life. Oh, how he wants to live in your life. Are you willing to make room for Jesus in your life? That's a big question. Have you got room for Jesus in your life? Will you let him be part of your life? All you've got to do is pray to him. Just pray with him right now. Pray to him right now. And I, you've heard this little song. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Friends, can I pray for you? Father in heaven, Lord, I know that you're knocking at hearts right now. I know that you have, you have precious children that you miss and that you love so much that are struggling right now. Maybe they're full of fear. Maybe they're afraid of the future for their family. Lord, would you, would you come into their heart right now? Lord, impress upon them that you're knocking right now, that this is real, that this, that this is something you want to do, that you do want to come into their life, and you want to be a part of their day-to-day -day life, not as a visitor, but as a permanent residence. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to move into hearts right now. Touch hearts, Lord. Change hearts. And I thank you for doing that. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.